my beautiful mic really is. All right, Howdy yo guys, Mark Absalon here. Hope you're having a great and wonderful day. You know, I get tons of emails about Chroma Key. Not only video, but also photography. And I thought I would actually do a video on Chroma Key for photography. In this video, we're gonna cover uh, what Chroma Key is, so you know the specifics of it. We're also gonna talk about the applications for setup and shooting in photography, and we're going to shoot a model. Now, what is Chroma Key? Chroma Key is the removal of a specific color or a range of colors to actually divulge an image behind the green screen. It's compositing an image. You create your Chroma Key photograph, digital photograph, you remove the green, and then you place another image behind it so you can have your subject anywhere you want them to be. The most essential thing to your chroma key, your digital photography chroma key, is lighting your green screen. Now, the primary thing you wanna do is keep it evenly lit. Let me tell you, if you don't have your green screen evenly lit, you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have something called hot spots come up. And the hot spots are where there's too much light and it's really horrible to key. Now, you can't use anything to light your green screen background. You really want a diffused light. You don't want anything directional like a spotlight or something of that nature. You want to diffuse it. What we're doing here is we're diffusing our light on the area of green screen behind us with two soft boxes right here, and we're angling them so that it actually illuminates the background evenly. Now, you can use an umbrella which will diffuse the light, and you can also use work lights with a certain technique, you can diffuse those lights. Now, lighting your green screen, you want to make sure that they are angled. Now, using a diffuse light, you angle them about 45 degrees to the back wall. This creates a nice diffuse light that hits the wall and keeps it all about the same on the f-stop, so that when you're keying, it uh, keys out correctly. There's one thing that happens sometimes when you're keying, and it's called color spill. There's a simple process to prevent this from happening, but it also depends on your software program too, because some digital programs are better than others. Uh, some of the programs that have been more geared toward chroma key work better than ones that are not geared toward chroma key. And the way that we prevent color spill, big bad word in chroma key, is we actually light our subject lighter than we do our background. We never take our chroma key background and blow it out with light. We always make sure that our subject that we're shooting is lit more. Now we need to talk about some of the applications on how to actually take photos with your digital photo camera. The first thing you want to do is you want to create a depth of fill with your camera. You do this by using a large lens and you back far away from your subject and zoom in. You zoom in on your subject and focus, which actually creates a blur on the chroma key background. You want to blur on the background because it makes it easier to key for your digital photo software that you're using. Another thing that will actually help you when you're actually shooting your digital photographs is to make sure you have your camera on manual. Now, we all know, we all love the auto feature of our camera, but for a chroma key photography and for photography in a studio, you don't want to use it on automatic. You want to use it on manual because you want total control of what you're shooting. When shooting your talent, make sure to keep your perspective on your light to keep it natural, whether the light's coming from the front or the back or whichever direction. You want to make sure that the background you have and the photograph you're taking with a chroma key combine together. Now, there are a variety of different programs out there for removing the chroma key from your digital photographs. But in this video, we're actually gonna only cover Photo Key. Photo Key is a great program. It can be found on tubetape.com. And the reason it's so great is the designers of it designed it specifically for chroma key removal using your digital photographs. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, if you're shooting chroma key, uh, in your digital photos and you just want to remove the chroma key that's what this program does it only does that so that's what makes it an excellent program to use now when you open up photo key you're gonna notice the user interface and the user interface is pretty simple and easy to use 
you'll notice that you have your overlay, which is actually an alpha channel that you can use. Um, you've got your foreground, which is your keyed individual or your digital, uh, your digital chroma key photograph that you took, and your background. Um, and then you have your canvas here, which is where the images actually go. And over on the left side, you're gonna have print, export, combine, which combines all the channels together, positioning, which positions your uh, different uh, images, filters, which we'll, we'll go into in a little bit, to kind of change the hues, the, the brightness, and et cetera, that might need to be altered a little bit in the photograph, your key button, your import, and your canvas size. Now at the top you've got your zoom control, and your zoom control actually zooms in and out on your canvas so you can see what uh, your image looks like more detailed. Now when you're editing this, you're actually going to see that your image is going to kind of look a little jaggedy and stuff, and that's kind of a low res type uh, image they have up here. And if you want to see it in full res before you actually do an export, you can click on full quality, and full quality will show that to you. Now that we've actually gone over the basics in the interface of PhotoKey, let's take our digital photograph that we've taken of Sarah and key something behind it. What we're going to do to actually key our image is we're going to go to the foreground key and click change. And we're going to get our, our image that we actually want to key here. And we've got it here, example photo. We'll pull that up. And voila, there is Sarah. And as you can tell, it's already automatically been keyed out. And what we want to do is we also want to click change on our background so we can bring our image in. Let's put Sarah, let's put her in Rome. So we'll open that up. As you can see, things are kind of messed up a bit, and um, we, we're going to fix all that. And how we fix it is we got a canvas size. You'll notice up in the corner, you'll see canvas size, 8 by 10 inches, and there's a different array of, of ones that you can actually choose for that. We're going to keep it at 8 by 10, and we're going to keep it at a portrait on their orientation, because our image and our background is kind of going up and down. And our resolution at 200 dpi is, is a good res. You can take it all the way up to 300 if you wanted to, but let's keep this one at 200. Well, we've got Sarah here. She's keyed out entirely, but let's make absolutely sure what's going on. Let's go to key, and you'll see up on the right side an array of different things from uh, the blur to the color difference to the crop comes in. Well, if you're having major issues with keying, because sometimes when you're keying a, a uh, green screen digital photograph, it's not gonna all key out. And to actually make it key out, you go up to detail and you can drop that down and it'll remove most of the rest of the key but we did a pretty good job of shooting Sarah on this so we really don't have to do that. Also another thing that might occur when you're shooting is you might actually shoot some of your chroma key and you don't get your sheet in it and you get some of the background or something you actually can't key. Well the way you can take that out of the picture is by using crop. You can crop left, you can crop right, you can crop the top, and you can crop the bottom. But you don't want to crop too much because if you crop too much, you're going to actually remove part of your image. And you don't want to do that. So we're not going to crop any of that. Our spill suppression is an extend, and we've got it up to 100%. Um, it doesn't look like we did a really bad job on shooting this, so we don't really have any, any uh, color spill coming out on Sarah too much here. Now, we need to actually go in and fix her positioning within the photograph. To do that, we go to position, and you'll see you've got foreground and background at the top. Right now, we're gonna work in the foreground and we're gonna place Sarah. Now, you can see position, horizontal, and vertical. We're going to actually bring her down, kinda cut her off a little bit and take her out of the image. And we're going to move her over just a little bit to kind of bring the image in so we kind of have her sitting there. You can also rotate and scale the image to like make her larger or make her smaller. I think you're probably going to scale her just a little bit. Kind of give. Well, if you click on background, you can kind of do the same thing you did with that. And you can move your image around. I'm 
gonna move it a little bit to the left there so that it looks a little bit better. Let's click full quality and see what our image looks like. Well, it looks rather nice. We don't have any color spill around Sarah and she seems to blend into the environment pretty well. And we've actually created a nice composite image of Sarah with Roman columns and um, looks pretty good. And our final step is to export or print. If we click export, we will get file formats. We can do PNG, JPEG, or TIFF. For a nice clear file, I would do a TIFF and we can export that. And we just click export, and type in the file name. Well, in this video, we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about ways to set up your chroma key, how to do it, how to light it, how to set up your model for the actual photograph. We've talked about some of the applications programs to use to actually do your chroma key with. We've talked about photo key, which is a great program. I can't knock it. It's one of the best ones out there that I've seen. I haven't seen anything comparable to it. Well, I hope you've learned a lot. This video has been fun, guys. You guys have a great evening, and uh, keep it cool and groovy.